Hey guys, in this video, we're going to take a look at the basic structure of a TensorFlow program for constructing a deep neural network. We'll also take a look at a tensor board, so stick around for that. We'll consider the MNIST dataset with 60,000 training samples and 10,000 test samples. Each sample is a 28 by 28 image. The goal is to determine the digit in the image. We'll first read the dataset by one-hot encoding our labels. We create a directory to store the paths to events in our computation graph. Now we start a session, or you can do it later using with. It's your choice. We then choose appropriate values for our hyperparameters. We define the number of neurons per hidden layer in the network and define the dataset specific parameters like input and output size. While programming in TensorFlow, it is often convenient to think of components visually as we would observe in a computation graph. Each program can be thus thought of having inputs, layers, loss, optimizer, evaluation, and training sections. Generally speaking, the input data is passed through the layers of our neural network. The corresponding cost, or loss, is computed that needs to be minimized by an optimizer. We can then evaluate performance of training. We begin by defining these sections with tf.namescope, and we fill these out one at a time. In the case of the MNIST dataset, for example, inputs would be the set of images and labels. Such inputs are defined with placeholders, indicating a promised value. For defining layers, we could define each hidden layer in its own scope manually, but it's much cleaner to code a definition inside a function, passing the layer name as an argument. Oh, by the way, FC stands for fully connected. In each layer, we have a set of weights, which we initialize to random normally distributed values. And we also have biases, initialized to negative one. We compute wx plus b and apply the ReLU activation, rectified linear unit, flushing the negative values to zero. This argument is optional as we don't apply ReLU to the output layer. Each layer is now defined by passing the input to the layer, the name of the layer, the number of output nodes, and the optional ReLU activation function. After the second layer, I construct a dropout layer that randomly turns off neurons. This is done to enhance generalization as it forces the network to learn along new paths. It reduces the chance of overfitting data. In the loss section, we compute the cost, or how inaccurate is our neural network. By applying a softmax function to the output layer Y, we get a set of values that range from 0 to 1, indicating the probability that an image is a specific digit. We then determine cross-entropy loss by comparing it to the one-hot encoded labels. And all of that in one line, yay! Base TensorFlow. TF Summary Scaler allows us to record changes to this value over time and display it on the tensor board. In the optimizer section, we define the atom optimizer to minimize the loss function. Praise the one-liners! Atom combines the advantages of other modern optimizers like Atagrad and RMSProp and works for a variety of problems. In the evaluation section, we determine the number of image samples predicted correctly. We'll see how this improves over time by recording it on our tensor board. We define file writers which contain event writing mechanisms to log events in their respective directories. Events in this case are step values of our scalars, loss and accuracy. File writer creates an empty directory and returns an event logger. So train writer can write events to the train folder while test writer can write events to the test folder. We finish by merging them into a list of summaries. All variables like weights and biases are now initialized. The tensors defined until this point are powerful, but they only construct the network, and what good is a network without any flow? Useless. We execute the training in batches, defined by batch size. We then push the flow to train the batch samples using session run. Since this is the result of training, 
I will log this event into the train directory using train writer. This event will contain the loss computed for this batch. We then determine the performance against the entire test set. Since this is the result of testing, I will log this event into the test directory using the test writer. This event will contain the accuracy computed at this point. We clean up by closing the train writer, the test writer, and the session. And we're done. We now run the program and fix any errors that occur. Now, run the tensor board feeding our graph directory. In the graph section, we can view our computation graph, just like we described in our program. In the scalar section, we can monitor our loss and accuracy over time. You can see that everything's running well as the loss decreases over time and the accuracy improves for the test set. For the current configuration, I can get up to a 96% accuracy over 10 epics. Play around with the hyperparameters to improve this number. Note that a typical feed-forward neural net isn't really an optimal solution for this computer vision problem. You can use convolutional neural networks instead and get a performance well over 99%. Now I'm like on. Regardless, I hope this gave you an insight of how to construct your TensorFlow code for DNNs and make use of TensorBoard for visualization. If you liked the video, click that like button and subscribe on your way out for more amazing videos. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.